everybody. All right, it is good to give thanks unto the Lord, to praise his holy name. Our gathering today is about Jesus Christ being the center. He is the audience for today, and uh, we recognize his goodness and his mercies. Today, it's raining outside, outside, it's wet, but we honor the Lord that we have a place to assemble ourselves to worship him. Uh, this week has come with challenges all throughout the week, but uh, we were glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so as we unite our voices and our hearts with praise and adoration about Jesus, we set our focus our gaze on him because he is our all in all. Without him, we have no help. Without him, we have no hope. But because Jesus is alive, we can live forevermore. Let's have our opening word of prayer and then we'll have our opening scripture reading. Father, we give you thanks and praise, oh God, for the blessings of this day, oh God. You have made this day and we choose to rejoice and to be glad in this day. Thank you, Lord God, that because of salvation, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can be anchored through the storms of life, oh God. And so you are worthy of our praise. And I thank you, Lord God, that you live in our praise. We need you to reign and to rule in our hearts, our lives, our minds, our spirits on today, oh God. As we join in agreement that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you that you are present here, oh God. Thank you that we can sense and to know that you are with us, oh God. And so all that is said and done in this place, may it be done to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'd you to stand as you're physically able this morning. We're going to read in unison our scripture reading for uh, this day for the second Sunday in the month of November, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, uh, is where our scripture reading is taken from, uh, even as uh, the word is spoken to uh, the children of, of Israel. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning with verse 4. Let's read together in unison. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands, and bind them on your foreheads. Verse 9. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to worship with us in song as you are able to, uh, to stand. Sister Susan will come in to lead us. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Let it be followed by our chorus as we ready ourselves for faith to be released. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Let's worship together in song. Amen. 
have that bread of life where you never go hungry. He have that water where you never thirst. So he want us to love each other no matter how mad we at each other. He said, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. He said, no. And that your opportunity will open for you. He said, seek, and you shall find. He's looking down. He wants you to come unto him.
Lord, we call out to you. And I thank you, Lord, that you are dwelling with us. Thank you that you are in the vessels, Lord God, that are open to you, Lord God. And we give you the highest praise. We give you hallelujah today, oh God. Thank you for your goodness and mercy that's following us, that's tracking us down, oh God. We bless you, Lord God, for who you are and all that you have done, oh God. Morning by morning, by mercies we see. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we have eyes to see and spirits to sense and minds to realize how wonderful you are, O oh God. Even as we're living in perilous days and perilous times, I thank you that you are a God who is not far from any of us, O oh Lord. And even through the issues and the challenges of life, it simply calls us oh, yeah. to seek after you and to search after you all the more, oh God. So I say thank you that as we search after you, we can lift up our needs, our petitions. Your word lets us know that we can cast all of our care on you. And you care for us, oh God. We're so undeserving of your care. But your grace, Lord God, continues to be mighty and strong and powerful as you are willing to be involved in our lives, oh God. So, Lord God, as we pray together as a community of faith, oh God, as we lift up the, the needs of the hour, oh God, I thank you, Lord God, that not only are you our healer, Lord God, but that you are a sustainer, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that even as we can pray one for another, may your kingdom come, may your will be done, Lord God, in lives here in the earth as it is in heaven, oh God. Unite ourselves, Lord God, in agreement around Jesus Christ as Lord. We thank you that we can pray as family with the Rito family today, oh God. Thank you for your sustaining grace and your mercies, Lord God. Even through the storms, Lord God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be a comforter, would be a counselor unto them as they've never experienced you before, Lord God. But we are all walking in some form and some level of grief. And we receive grief as a gift, oh God, to help challenge us and to move us and to push us closer and closer to you, oh God. So we just say thank you, Lord God, for all that you have desired to do, oh God. And I thank you that you are still causing things to come together, to work together, Lord God, for good. So we bless you for that, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that the sick are being strengthened, Lord God. Health is being restored because your word still said, says that healing is your children's bread, oh God. We take you at your word, oh God. We come boldly to your throne of grace, Lord God, to receive all that you have in store for us, oh God. Father, we pray for those that are seeking for answers, those who are seeking for life, those who are seeking, Lord God, for hope, oh God, those who are discouraged and down and bruised and wounded by life, oh God. I thank you that you are the healer. I thank you, Lord God, that even as we give you permission to have your way, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in the spiritual realm, oh God. Our faith, Lord God, we can see in the spiritual realm. Our minds are able to fathom your word and the depth of your word and the strength of your word, the power of your word, oh God. That's why we can continue to pray for your kingdom to come, your reign, your rule to be done, oh God. We bless you, Lord God. We pray for our nation, Lord God. We pray and ask for, Lord God, a, 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 a peaceful transition, oh God. Even after the elections have been held, we ask that there would be safety, Lord God. Thank you for hearing those prayers, oh God. Father, we just continue to cry out to you as a nation, oh God. May we seek you. May we seek your face. May we seek your will. May we understand what you are up to, oh God that we can continue to be your people, that we can continue to model love, this agape love to everyone, oh God. We believe, Lord God, for transformation to be manifest, Lord God, in great and mighty ways, oh God. So we love you, 
We thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. And Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that you, you would be glorified, oh God, even as you are meeting needs, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Will be taking as we 
or a challenge to look into God's will, to understand better God's will uh, in, the, in our lives and for the world uh, around us. And so as we ready ourselves for uh, the word proclaimed today, Sister Susan will come and lead us in our sermonic hymn, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Time is filled with swift transition, not on earth. <laughs> All right, Sister Susan will come and lead us. That'll be followed by our message of the day, God's will.
that we have, who you are. We can hold to you, O oh Lord, in the midst of the changes of life, in the midst, Lord God, of the changes that we go through. I thank you for that anchoring as we hold to your hand, O oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are keeping us. You're blessing us and helping us, oh God. Let's speak to us from your word, oh God. As we look into your word, thank you that your word is a light. Thank you, your word is lamp. Thank you that it is guiding our pathways. Help us, Lord God, as we discern life around us, that we can honor you through it all. Jesus, we pray. Brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen, amen, amen. To the black women that are gathered here in the sanctuary, the black women who are joining us online uh, today, I want to say thank you for all that you have done. Amen. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for holding your families together. Yes. Thank you for holding our schools together. Thank you for holding our communities together. And still get no credit. Still get no recognition. Still get no place. And uh, the recognition doesn't come in this society for all that you do or who you are as being created in the image of God. Just want to take this opportunity as we start our word today to our black women today to say thank you. Somebody may say, what about the white women? I say it to the black women. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you. Thank you. Keep it real. From season to season, there arises a lot of banter, a lot of conversation around God's will. God's will this. God's will that. There's been a lot of banter, a lot of conversation after something has happened. Well, that's God's will. God's will here and God's will there and God's will everywhere. I wanted to take these few moments this morning and to do some teaching according to God's word in regards to what his will is about and how we position ourselves to better know the will of God. God's will being done uh, we understand the, the blessings are here and when God's will, when we say God's will being done, the, the blessings are over here. Um, but at the same time, the ones over here who have seen something happen and declared that this is God's will because they believed it. Then you have believers over here who have been believing for God's will and it does not manifest and they believe for God's will. Who it is God's will? On this end, it lifts up people. On this end, God's will destroys people. God's will. God's will. There's, there's, there's rejoicing over here for God's will being done, and there's gnashing of teeth for what apparently was God's will being done. All at the same time. When we talk about sports teams, and as you observe sports teams from time to time, and particularly those victors, they said, oh, I just want to thank God for his will being done. God willed that we would win, and we believe that. And the team on the other side, they won't believe in God. 
for the same thing. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. And then when we talk about sports, I, I really don't, I don't think God's concerned that much about when the sports teams win. I really don't. And yet God gets thrown out a lot of stuff about what has happened. My team won, so God's will was being done. Yeah, but my team lost, and I don't believe for God's will. So you're telling me God's will was for my team to lose. Hmm. God's will, the banter goes on a lot. And so, you know, just, is God really concerned about all of these sports competitions? Oh, yeah, my team won. I won $100 because I bet it because that God's will took place. Hmm. Okay. God is concerned about what happens in, in Las Vegas. What happens uh, in the gambling casinos in New Jersey. God's will, God's will. Micah 6 and 8 lets us know what God is concerned about. Act justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly with your God. Talked about God's will. Our text of scripture this morning, uh, it teaches about the testing and the approving of God's will. Scripture goes on to say his, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. Starts off by saying his his good will. The word good suggests that there is a there, there there's existence of a of another word. If it's not good, then it must be bad. The perfect will of God suggests the existence of a less perfect will of God. In other words, if there is a perfect will of God, then uh, there is uh, also a not so perfect will of God. And so may I just introduce here a concept that hopefully we can become more and more comfortable with, God's permissive will. Not his perfect will, but what he permitted, his permissive will. It wasn't God's perfect plan, but God permitted it to take place. God allowed it, even though there may have been sin in the house, he permits it. God's permissive will. This is what God allows. What God allows. Understand that we as God's highest created order as human beings, understand that we are a free will people. Amen. So you and I have wills also. Okay, understand. We're created in God's image. We have wills also. So, again, just a little hint early on. Let's be careful what we're calling God's will being done. Right. Maybe it's our will Amen. being done. Come on now. Right. We are free will people. Uh, again, God made us with that free will. He does not force his will upon us. As he created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Again, his highest created order made in his image with free will. You and I can choose to live our lives as we want to live it. We have that will. Amen. We haven't experienced that. We didn't experience that freedom to really be who we are until we submitted our will to God's will. Uh, but that's uh, another story in the midst of that. God does not force his will. We have the privilege to choose whatever we want. And understanding that it comes with consequences. So be careful what we deem as God's will. If I decided right now that I want to go on top of that roof and begin to run and to cut flips and it's raining and it's wet and I slip and fall and break my will, break, break my leg. Oh, that was God. That was God's will. No, it wasn't. That was my foolishness. That was my foolishness. Talk about God's will. Well, it was God's will that you didn't break your neck. Well, maybe that was his permissive will. It was not his perfect will. It's what he permitted, even when there was sin in the house. His permissive will. Consequences that come with that. In the Old Testament, God permitted the children of Israel to make their own choices. Yeah. They made their choices of leaders. They made their choices of brides that the men would marry. They made the choices about their lifestyles and the gods that they would, would serve. And more times than not, it ended up in a mess. That was that permissive will. 
as God's highest created beings, he's giving us that order, that right, that opportunity to choose. He permits some things. In the Old Testament, we see, see that. Even with, with, with uh, the children of Israel, everybody else that having a king. We want a king, oh God. We, God says, I, no, I am your king. Oh no, we want to be like everybody else. And God permitted that. Permitted that. Even in the New Testament, the same thing we see operating in the New Testament. A lot of things that ended up in a, in a mess. Again, you understand, is that God's will? The church was persecuted in the book of Acts as we read. If you called your name out, a follower of Jesus Christ, you were persecuted. Understand that, uh, again, when, when, when people become in, in charge of certain things, there were uh, some things that manifested itself that uh, we just can't put totally on, on God, okay? What God permits does not mean that it's his will, okay? What he permits. So as we begin to, to cover things that happen in our lives, God, that's your will, is what he permits in our lives. So what I want us to realize is that there is a way to live our lives that can reveal to us God's will for our lives. That's why the Apostle Paul writes here uh, in, in Romans chapter 12, present our lives, present our bodies as living sacrifices unto him, holy, pleasing unto God. This is our true and proper worship, as the word says. And so uh, we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by our Thinking. Now, that was part of our teaching on Wednesday night and understanding our thinking behind our faith. The perfect will of God is God's divine plan for your life. That's why we encourage one another to live lives that are pleasing and acceptable unto God. To live lives that are holy. This is why we want to instill in our children and in our young adults. Oh, yeah. Don't go out there and, leave, and live foolish lives. Yeah. Because you're going to miss God's perfect will for oh, yeah. your life. You're going to miss God's perfect blessings for your life. Because you're caught up in living life in other ways and in other means. Yeah. The perfect will of God is God's divine plan for your life. It's what he has divinely aligned, divinely arranged for our lives. And understand that it's bigger than just you. It's yeah. bigger than just you. We right. live in a life at a time that everything is about me. Everything is about me. Everything with me got to be perfect. Everything got to be... God's will is bigger than just your life and your own personal universe. It's bigger than all of that. We can understand that uh, God uh, has so much in store for us in our lives. And so, again, he's telling us, uh, the Apostle Paul is telling us that as we present our bodies as a, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, don't conform to the patterns of this world. Be aware of how you're choosing to live. Be aware of how you're choosing to dissect life. Be aware of how you're choosing to live your life. Understand that there are certain patterns that are there. You know, we teach some of these patterns by understanding that the culture has certain acceptable behavioral patterns that you are supposed to address your life as. If you, from this neck of the woods, you're supposed to handle things this way. If you came up on the rough side, you're supposed to handle things on this way. Oh, yeah. Be aware of that. And so he says and gives us that warning, uh, don't conform to the patterns of this world, those cut and paste patterns. But be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Oh, yeah. Seeing the word, living the word. Our minds are renewed. How can it, how is it that we can be people of agape love? Because our minds are renewed. How is it that we can love our enemies? Because our minds are renewed. How is it that we can live our lives and not worry about what people may do? Our minds are renewed. We're not the cut and paste. If you do this, you're supposed to do that. If somebody do this to you, you're supposed to do that. Yeah. 
be transformed. Our minds are transformed. And as that takes place, the Apostle Paul says, then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is. We'll be able to test. We'll be able to see. We'll be able to, to, to question. We'll be able to kind of see what it is composed of. As you're testing a science experiment, you'll be able to test what God's will really is. You'll be able to sign off and to approve on God's will. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. His good and pleasing. Oh, yeah. I understand that even in studying this, this passage, good and pleasing are not words to describe God's will here. They're not adjectives, but in the original text, they are nouns. Mm -hmm. God's will is good. God's will is pleasing. Yes. They are nouns. They are not descriptive, if you will. God's will is what is good. God's will is what is pleasing unto him. The thing that is good is his will. Oh, yeah. So we pray that we may find God's will by finding out what is good, what is pleasing unto God. God's will. God's perfect will comes with his full blessings. His permissive will comes with, if you will, half blessings. Half blessings. Through the years I've had conversations with, with folks and looking at their lives and their circumstances and the choices that they've made and they'll say readily to me is that I understand I'm not in God's perfect will. I'm in God's permissive will. But I'm still going to search. I'm still going to seek to live for him. And so this is why we have to instill in every generation. God has a full blessing in store for our children. He has a full blessing in store for our grandchildren. He has a full blessing. And so he's, he's giving us opportunities to lead and to guide and to shape and to form them that they can live in the full blessings of God. We can't keep settling for every generation, only getting to the point of, of saying that, oh, well, I wish I was in God's perfect will. And to understand that as we live our lives day in and day out, we have to live it to show other folks that God's perfect will is awesome indeed, comes with full blessings indeed. And so God's will is good. God's will is pleasing. And here is where you can use the concept God's will is perfect. Yes, man. His perfect will. The perfect will of God. So as we look around our lives and as we try to ascertain, God, what are you up to? We want to say, God, what's your good and pleasing will? What's your perfect will? What's acceptable unto you, oh God? And to other understand that as we live our lives in real worship unto him, uh, giving ourselves, sacrificing our lives, holy, pleasing unto God. And as we have our minds transformed, renewed continually, we can find God's will, God's perfect will for our lives, for the situation, the circumstances that you maybe are about to walk into. You can walk into that. Understand that you can know God's perfect will. God's perfect will just doesn't involve you and you alone. Amen. Understand that God is, a, is, is too big for just everything to work out just like for you and you alone. He's too big for that. Scripture says, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul writes the Lord, he calls these things to work together. Things, and braiding of different things, allowing them to, to come together, to be braided together causes things to work together for his will. So as we view life, as we view things that happen around us, uh, my word to us today is let's be cautious about what we call God's will, or let's be, again, more precise about, well, God permitted that. He allowed that. His permissive will. And to know that even as you and I make our choices, as we move forward with the opportunities that lie in front of us, presenting our bodies as living sacrifices, 
holy and acceptable unto God. Living our lives, Lord, I want my mind to be transformed. I don't want that screwy thinking in my life to control my thought processes. I want my mind to be transformed. I can know your will Amen. for my life. Yeah. To those who may be in the midst of making decisions and choices, and there comes points in time when young adults are making choices about their careers and about their futures and what's there. It's things like this that we have to instill and to teach generations. It pays to live right. It pays to be holy. It pays to sacrifice ourselves before God. It pays to have our minds renewed, and I don't have to be like homeboy over here. I don't have to be like thug over there. But I can have my mind renewed, transformed. Because why? I'm discerning God's will, his perfect will, his blessings for my life, his blessings for the world around us. God's perfect will comes with his full blessing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Therefore, then you'll be able to test, test God's will, test. God, are you calling me over here to do this? Let me test your will. And I, as I surrendered my life to you, as I allow myself to be disciplined and transformed, I want to do your will, oh God, in looking around me and my life's calling and what you have in store for me moving forward. God's will, it's good. We want that. We oh, want yeah. that to be done, to be manifested. The right course of action for us as we move forward, as we move ahead. And we want our course of action to be acceptable mm -hmm. unto him. Amen. God's perfect will. Yeah. I desire we have to count the cost for God's perfect will to be revealed unto us as we move forward, as we deal with the challenges of our day, as we deal with the challenges of what's in store for us. Yeah. Understand where our will comes into place. And we have to begin to check our will so that God's will would be done. Mm -hmm. That sacrifice and that surrendering. God, I want your will. You know what I will. You know what I want. You know what my desires are. But Lord, as Jesus taught us how to pray, not my will, but your will be done. Your will be done. Amen. So we just stop striving with God. And we say, God, I'm going to accept your will being done in my life and those around me. Teach me and show me your way. Yes. Help me to understand what you permit. Help me to understand what you desire. Yes, sir. What you desire to perfect yes. around me and in the world yes. around me. Yes. Will you stand with me this morning? Yes. God's will. Good. Pleasing. Acceptable. Sometimes there are times that God's will calls us to the storm. To recognize God, I just want your will to be done in my life and in my witness that others can see what you are up to in this world. And so wherever you are on your journey of life, Scripture gives us guidance trying to track God, what he's doing, what he's up to. Involves you and I giving our lives as living sacrifices. Us understanding the, the holiness that God is calling us to. Again, there are those who say, you know, it just don't take all that. We're chasing something greater than what the cut and paste world system may be tracing, may be afterwards, and maybe have bought into. God is so real, He's so rich, and He desires to give us full blessings full blessings in his presence. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, just for the opportunity to gather around your word, oh God. We know that we're living in a time that, God, you are ignored so many times. 
until something happens and we are excited about what has happened at your will, oh God. Help us to know and to realize what you're really concerned about, oh God. That's what we want to chase after. Father, we hear the conversations and those around us about it just doesn't take all of that. You are a good person, so just go ahead. I thank you, Lord God, for your word that shows us a higher order of existence, that shows us, Lord God, a, a higher order of life, even in you and in your kingdom, oh God. May we not reject your righteousness. May we not reject your holiness. May we not tolerate, Lord God, the cut and paste thought processes of our world. Saturate us in your love. Saturate us, Lord God, in your goodness. Saturate us, Lord God, in the overflowing abundance of life, oh God. And we give you thanks and praise for those that are trying to discern your will in areas and decisions and choices in your life, in their life, oh God. Here's the pattern, oh God. Here's the answer you're going to pull in. Help us to test your will, oh God. To see what you approve of in the choices and the decisions that we make. And Father, as we do that with integrity, there's some times that we will miss your will. When our hearts are right, you know where to find us. You know how to get us back on track. And we thank you for that, Lord God. You know our hearts. You know our spirits and you know the choices that are hand on us, oh God. May we honor you in seeking to find your will, your good will, your pleasing will, and my, 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 your perfect will, oh God. We bless you, Lord God, and thank you for the covering over your people as they move forward into a brand new week, into a brand new season. They take you with you, Lord God, and may they find out the full blessings of your presence and of your proud power and of your love, oh God. Thank you for hearing our prayer as our hearts are lifted up to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. Amen. Let's say the Lord. Your word is boundless. And we can take the word with us. We can as we move forward and continue to study and allow the Lord to speak to you. You may be seated. The presence of the Lord this morning. Attentiveness once more to God's word as we seek to be living in God's word. We came in in the rain and I see the sun yes, breaking Lord. through yes. the clouds. And so, literally, the yes. S U N and the S O N. As God's will is perfected. Keep on smiling on us, oh God. I think we said that last Sunday. God has smiled yes, on me. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your presence here. Those of you who have joined us online, we thank you for tuning in. Some of you may have thought you got rained out, but so glad that you were able to join us uh, anyway as we honor the Lord. This is the second Sunday in the month of November. And uh, again, by way of uh, the hospitality and blessings of Jamelia, I said Jamelia and Michael Dixon. Michael's at work. And Jamelia said, You don't see no more. You don't see Michael back here. So, you give my brother a little bit of fun. But they went in together. They went in together. But just to show love to the church appreciation, uh, they are preparing brunch for us. Somebody may be saying, What is brunch? You, we going to find out. We're going to find out. And so, uh, even for this particular uh, early day before it turns 12 noon, uh, again, their hospitality. If you need to take your plate to go out, I would imagine that there are to-go plates back there um, also. Uh, next Sunday, again, is the third Sunday. Um, Thanksgiving is not until the 28th of this year, so our Harvest Day celebration is not until December, the first Sunday of December, which is that Sunday after Thanksgiving. So just a little uh, heads up in, in that regards to what our schedules may be. Wednesday night, we continue in our Zoom study, our Zoom conference. Uh, we've talked about a prayer pr perspective, 
we're adding a faith perspective into our praying. We want to uh, tie some things together, looking at a faith perspective this coming uh, Wednesday, um, Wednesday night. Um, again, brunch will be served. Uh, it's so good to have uh, the real family worshiping with us today. I think I got word to Dr. Dez just saying, look, I need church today. I need church today. And uh, even as they were uh, with the, the husband and father and his transitioning on uh, last night, um, but the doctor said it didn't quite happen like the doctor said. God is always right. still in control. Yes. So uh, we thank the Lord uh, for that. Again, arrangements have not been finalized, but uh, as um, Liberal Catholic Church will give consent uh, for funeral services this coming Saturday uh, will be the, um, the order of the day. So the announcements, the arrangements will be announced uh, later on as we proceed uh, in this week. We're going to be prayerful and supportive of Sister Ethel and her family. And uh, again, just God has just strengthened them even with them. The little bit of walking I had a chance to do with them even through this battle. Uh, they took the Lord with them, and the Lord strengthened them and sustained them, and uh, again, they're appreciative of your prayers of support and your offerings of encouraging, encouragement, and so uh, thanks be to God for, uh, for that, and uh, we're going to see the goodness of the Lord, we're going to see the goodness of the Lord in all of this, and uh, uh, the Lord's uh, uh, blessing will be upon us all and be upon the real family. Okay, well, we're going to ready ourselves again, as always, just encouraging us to be generous people, generous people, generous. God wants generous people. And even as we've learned to give in faith, uh, we've seen the blessings of God come back unto us. That good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. God allows that to chase after us indeed. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to Amen. stand and we're going to receive our blessing of our meal and our benediction uh, as we transition from this space into uh, the cafeteria and uh, even into uh, to home, our homes and uh, starting a brand new week. Amen. Amen. Oh, by the way, we know tomorrow is Veterans Day and uh, I think Brother Kenneth is the only veteran we have present here. Uh, tomorrow morning at 7.45 there is a veterans program at Palmella Elementary. And I think around 10 o'clock tomorrow at North Central High School, there will be a, a program honoring our, uh, the veterans among us. Uh, this past Thursday, uh, we saw uh, Sister Pat Mason Guillory and company uh, give a luncheon to the veterans uh, at the Yamberley and so honoring those. And just glancing at the newspaper today, if you're a veteran, most restaurants are offering you, if not a free meal, then a very discounted meal. I know IHOP is a free breakfast. I know that. Oh, okay. All right. So, again, our veterans is to show them blessings and the appreciation uh, that they have. Amen. Let's agree together and have our benediction. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the blessings of the hour. We thank you that as we've come together to worship you, that we have known that you have been with us. No, Father, and Father, as we transition into our cafeteria area, we thank you for the meal that has been prepared, the hands of love that uh, have so graciously prepared it. We pray blessings upon the Dixon family, Lord God. May a good measure press down, come back unto them, even as they've shared of their hospitality and their gifts. And uh, we pray blessings upon our fellowship together. And even as we would leave this place and scatter to be the body of Christ, may we be the body of Christ, seeking always to live in your will as we identify your perfect will as we move forward in this week. Bless us as we go. Keep us, bring us back together again on next time, on next week, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Lord bless you. The hands of the nations.